you so much for listening to Uplifting Impact. I have a special opportunity for you. For everybody who is a listener, we are going to be hosting a wonderful How to Be an Ally Summit. It is a virtual summit. And for those of you who are our listeners, we know that you're already on your allyship journey. But if you're ready to go deeper, to learn more, to put some more tools into your toolbox, we'd love to have you join us. The summit is going to be hosted February 1st through the 3rd, 2021. So go ahead, get your ticket and make sure that you get a ticket, not just for yourself, but get a ticket for somebody in your family. Get a ticket for the people that are on your team. Let's go ahead and figure out how we can move further, faster, and together. Welcome to Uplifting Impact. I'm so glad to have as our guest today, Ashley Ladd. And Ashley actually is at an organization that means so much to me because it's a really vital organization to what we do here at Uplifting Impact. And that organization is HubSpot. So Ashley is the Manager of Diversity, Inclusion, and Belonging at HubSpot, a global tech company headquartered in Cambridge, Massachusetts. She oversees content, events, and strategy for HubSpot's employee resource groups, which include women at HubSpot, people of color at HubSpot, the LGBTQ Alliance, and Black Hub. She currently sits on the board of trustees of her alma mater, St. Lawrence University, and lives in Canton, uh, Massachusetts with her husband, Adam, and their dog, Arnold. And she's on our podcast today. Thank you so much, Ashley, for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Dana. This is amazing. Absolutely. So give me a little bit of background, Ashley, on how you got to this moment and and why you're doing this work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, It was definitely a journey. I think uh, no one really like wakes up one day saying, you know what I'm going to do today? Be a diversity, inclusion, and belonging manager for a global tech company. So uh, it's been such an incredible opportunity and such a wonderful career journey. For me, uh, it really started out with my love of helping people. Um, I had really kind of career pivoted entirely when I came to HubSpot. So prior to this, I worked in e-commerce retail. I was a furniture buyer. I was doing just such a different, living such a different life, but really at the root of everything that I did, um, it really encompassed diversity, inclusion, and making sure that people felt like they belonged. And so for me, it felt like my passions were kind of coming together when this role really opened up and opened my eyes to, to what I could do in tech. I think for me, I never saw myself at a tech company because I always kind of envisioned it as I had to be a software engineer or I had to be, you know, a business analyst or a data scientist. And so for me, it was so cool to be able to to sit on a people operations team impacting uh, employees. So it's been such an incredible journey. Um, I've been at HubSpot now for a little over two and a half years, um, being able to grow our employee resource groups, help drive strategy for our diversity, inclusion, and belonging initiatives. And uh, I just feel so grateful that it is something that is, you know, my full-time job. It's not just uh, an additional or an extracurricular. It's something that I get to to live and breathe every single day. You know, there's a couple of things about what you just shared when you think about what your journey is, because a lot of people will ask me, well, how do you get into diversity, equity, and inclusion work? And one of the things that I always share with them is it's It doesn't, everybody gets here a little bit differently, right? But one of the origin spots is always with heart. It's always about, I really, really was passionate about how we created this space for all of these wonderful different groups that we have to be able to come together and work collectively. And so no matter what that path is and how it might have, have winded, you know, in your road, that really it starts with that heart piece. It really does. And I think for me too, there are folks that have, you know, whether they've been in a room where it's just them or they've experienced some sort of um, inequity, they're able to really understand what that's like and know that there's a better, there's a better place for everyone and there should be a place where everyone belongs. So kind of at the root of all of our DNI work, especially at HubSpot. Absolutely. So when you think about like that component too, that 
um, you know, I, I know, and I've experienced some things that weren't the best or, you know, really didn't serve me as a person or didn't provide the opportunity for me to thrive. How, if there's somebody listening, who's like, wait, she's describing what's happening with me right now. And I think that, you know, kind of pursuing something in the diversity, equity, and inclusion place could help me deal with what I'm, what, what I'm going, what's going on right now in my own life. What would you say to that person who's listening? Yeah, for me, and obviously before this, I had a totally different career path. So I, I tried to infuse a lot of my DIMB kind of passions into what I did on a day to day. But for me, I really found the people that I knew cared. So whether it was the organizations that I wanted to join, the networking events, um, now virtual networking events, um, connecting with folks on LinkedIn that I know kind of champion and, and are passionate about the work as well. So for me, it really started with finding the people that, that do the work and that are really passionate about the work, because then you'll feel really incorporated and included into something that you know you can either drive change in your own organization or really just find a safe space. Yeah, you know, and I think that that's one of the beautiful things when you think about what ERGs can do, right? Why why do ERGs exist? Because a lot of times you have to find that community and it can be really challenging when there isn't that structure in place to navigate it by yourself. So uh, that's awesome that you're helping get the ERGs off the ground and really moving at HubSpot. Yeah, I think for me, I was lucky because I got to come into an environment where the ERGs already existed and okay, now great. being here for, you know, two and a half plus years, it's been so incredible to watch them grow and evolve and change. And something that's been so impactful for me is to watch how intersectional they've become. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not just about women at HubSpot or about parents. It's about, you know, the working mom, or it's about, you know, not just about the LGBTQ Alliance, but, or POCA, our people of color group, but how they all intersect. So what that means for different communities and for folks that, that live in those intersections. That's amazing. And not a lot of people really talk about um, how much work can be done at an intersectional level when we talk about ERGs. So that's fascinating that you're seeing that and that your ERGs are already moving in that direction. Because I think sometimes we think like, oh, that's just separating us further. But actually, no, it just gives us the opportunity to be more thoughtful and uh, you know, a little bit more strategic about how we pull ourselves together. Is that what you're seeing? Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's, it builds a level of empathy that you can't, you can't see anywhere else um, when you come together and specifically for our women at HubSpot group, which is the one I was really uh, tasked with helping to grow when I got to HubSpot was um, how do we ensure that everybody has a seat at the table here? And something that we thought about um, when I, when I first joined was that sometimes the idea of feminism becomes very much this like white lens of feminism. And so how do we ensure that women of color are brought to the table and have uh, a discussion around what that means for black women, for black trans women, for all these different groups within that, within that umbrella. And so for me, I really wanted to, to bring that to light. And so we were able to create a really wonderful um, series called Women Who Lead, which is really all about ensuring that uh, black women and women of color have kind of a seat at the table to have a conversation about what it's like in corporate America or growing your company or starting a company. Um, and so it's just been a really wonderful journey to talk about things that range from, you know, self-care and finding joy to, you know, building your brand and your business um, and just, and really talking about the, not just the things that I think sometimes feel divisive and very, um, polarizing, but also the things that are uh, part of our triumph and part of our celebration as well. Absolutely. And speaking of celebration, you all were just uh, recognized, right, for the Innovative Initiative uh, winners, as Innovative Initiative winners. And so first of all, congratulations. But second, tell us what that means. Yeah, so it was really such a cool opportunity. So we partnered with the Boston Women's Workforce Council, which is really all about creating equity for for women in the Boston area. And so we were um, what we call 100% co talent compact signers, which means that we are upholding kind of the the equity around um, gender equity, pay equity, all of the um, diversity, inclusion, and belonging initiatives that we know are important to helping women succeed at work. And so um, it was so cool to be a part of that uh, 
specifically that group, but then they created these uh, innovative awards for folks that were kind of building on that mission. And for us, um, our Women Who Lead initiative uh, was able to be part of that, which was such a cool and very inaugural uh, moment for us. We had launched our series um, and have since then had, you know, virtual events and in-person events. And, and it's just been such a great way to bring people together, to connect, to, to really get to the root of why these intersections are important and why we need to, when we talk about, you know, women in the workplace, we don't just talk about white women. We talk about everybody and we understand what that means. We also talk about allyship. We talk about um, how our male allies can be can be better advocates in the workplace. And so we bring all of those into the fold. And I think that's why we were able to be um, one of our one of the first award winners, which has been such an honor. That's awesome. So I think, you know, one of the things that I because uh, pe- people will say, OK, well, how do I get my company like activated? Right. Or how do I get my community activated? And the example that you just shared, it was really a community company activation. Right. You, you were able to blend the two because the community said, here's something that you all can do together. And then you as a company responded to that call for action and then took it a little bit further. Is that um, something that you have seen before in some of the other spaces that you've worked in? Do you think that that helped fuel or maybe move you a little bit faster? How did that community and company uh, relationship play out? Yeah, I think for me, it really started with HubSpot. I mean, putting the investment behind not just um, a culture team, but specifically a, a piece of that being diversity, inclusion, and belonging. So knowing that these these roles are are valued parts of the organization that can then help us find, you know, other businesses and organizations that are doing the work as well. I don't think there's always a time where we need to reinvent the wheel. I think Mm -hmm. if we can partner together, if we can find organizations where we have common values and goals, why not try to work together to to bring that to light and to, to really help amplify the message? And so for HubSpot, for me, it was very much a signal that D&I was not going anywhere. Like there was just so much work to be done and that our team is growing exponentially, which is really exciting. Um, but that we were very, very much so a leader in that space saying like, this isn't something you do outside of work on the side of your, your day job. This is part of your day job. Um, and then being able to, to strategize around what are the companies and organizations that are also doing this work, doing it well, and also embody a lot of the missions uh, that we also have and the goals that we have set for ourselves as an organization. Um, so being able to partner there has been just really, really remarkable and finding, finding those, those right additions to kind of, you know, enhance our programs for our employees. And what you've just described really is a learning environment, right? So it's an organization that says we value learning, which I know you do at HubSpot because you've made tremendous investments in not just your own inter- learning, but also the learning that you do uh, for your clients and beyond. I think that's one of the things I tell people all of the time that, the training that you can get from HubSpot just as a free resource is actually very exceptional. And so I know that you're, that's baked into your DNA as an organization, but if you're in an organization where it's like, you know, people are a little bit more tight chested and a little bit more, uh, I don't know if I want to share, you know, what, what's going right. And I, I certainly don't know if I want to share uh, what might be going wrong. Is there any advice that you might give or anything you've learned by being that kind of a learning environment that uh, you think somebody could take back up to their leadership? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the hardest parts is really just jumping in and getting started. Um, a lot of what I've loved about HubSpot's d and mission is that it starts grassroots. You have to really prove that it's something that is valuable to the organization and, and 10 out of 10 times it, it is. And so why not, you know, start small. I think for, for a lot of what we're thinking about in the d space, it is so these ideas and these kind of goals are so big and so lofty that sometimes it's difficult to understand where to start. Start with what you know and what you, the, maybe the problem that you're trying to fix. So whether it's a book club discussion, whether it's just getting together to brainstorm or think tank, whether it's talking about current events and understanding how we best equip folks in our organization to talk more freely and openly about the things that are happening outside of the HubSpot world, um, I think is just really important. So sometimes those small discussions go so much further in creating that safe space for folks to really open up 
And then from there, the organization sees it grow and sees more people joining in in the conversation. And that's really where you get the attention of the leadership team. And that's where you really get, you know, your, your, you know, groups to really understand that there's value in kind of formulating this and and making it something that, that lasts long-term. You know, I think that one of the questions I get often from people is they'll say, in fact, I just got this question the other day and someone asked, uh, well, do you really think like small things, like I, I'm an ally and I want to go big, right? I, I have this like go big or go home kind of mentality. And so do you really think these small things uh, have an impact, right? Is it enough of an impact? Can I really call myself an ally if I'm only doing these small things? And my response is always what you just said, Ashley, like, I think it's important for us to realize that we want to change the policies. We want to change the laws. We want to make sure that we're thinking about the big strategic things. And that's the work, you and I get up and get excited about doing, and we want as many people as we can have alongside us to do that work. But as a diversity, equity, and inclusion expert, I know that the most impactful heart changing, that's where we started, heart, right? That this is the work of the heart, but that heart changing stuff actually happens in those small things. And so we can't do these big things. It, 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 you know, statistics aren't the things that move people. It's people's stories. It's their experiences. It's their relationships that actually move them to action. So I, I love the way you said that. That's really powerful. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And I think um, something that's really stuck with me is uh, as we kind of nurture and bring on new folks at HubSpot, just hearing that the reason they wanted to join was because they saw, you know, our women who lead initiative and they, they got to attend and got to see a room full of black and brown women talking about, you know, everything from networking to growing your career and how much that meant to them. And that is, that is the impact that we're trying to get at. And the amount of folks in the room or the people there doesn't always, you know, make the difference. We don't need 500 people or, you know, big numbers, but sometimes it's just really impactful to see one or two folks to say, you know what, that, that really stuck with me. Um, and I think that is, those are the small incremental things. And I always talk about like, not trying to boil the ocean. We talk about that a lot at HubSpot. It's like, we could do a million things, but you know, what are the things that are going to be most impactful? Um, and what are the things that are really going to move the needle long-term? So I have, I have a question for you because that boil the ocean thing resonates a lot, right? With me, it's just this idea that you want to do a million different things. So how do you, as the lead in this, you know, amazing organization with a, such an important topic and such a, an important area, how do you choose like what you're going to prioritize and what you're going to put your energy into and where the resources are going to go? Yeah, I think as we've continued to grow, it's really about listening to what our employees' needs and wants are. Um, for me in particular, I think being able to see our employee resource groups, you know, really flourish when our employees take the lead um, has been something that I've really, really, really grown from. So not always is it that they have a DNI team and then somebody's coming in like myself and leading, you know, programs and, and events, but being able to, to chat in small groups with the folks that are, we have leadership councils uh, for all of our ERGs, which are just really over the moon dedicated hub spotters to our DIMB initiatives. And they, they help to really propel these, these programs forward. And so being able to sit with those folks and say like, what are the things top of mind for you? Where do we see blind spots? Because I can see everything from my point of view and I can see it from a people operations standpoint. And how do we make sure we're impacting our employees? But for, for an employee to say, you know what, I think we're really missing the mark on, you know, these three things. How do I, how do I take that and, and produce something that's going to be impactful for a large group of people? So I always like to look back and turn that question back on our employees to say like, what are the things that you feel like are missing and how do we do them and how do we do them at scale, you know, and how do we make sure that everyone can really get involved? And it goes everywhere from, you know, even just the messaging, let's make sure the messaging is even inclusive. Like, I think what's great about our employee resource groups is that everyone is invited to the table. We make it very specific that, you know, certain groups are, are meant for certain folks, but that's not to say that our allies and our advocates are not welcome. They are 110%. So I think we all have something to learn and, and better understand one another. And that's just been such a joy to be able to see our employees be able to, to point those out and bring people together. 
you know what? I know that you're good at your job because you just basically <laughs> said, I listen. And you know, that is sometimes as, as we move up in leadership roles, whether it's in the DEIB space or whatever it might be, whatever function, you know, we might be playing in our organization. Somehow, for some reason, sometimes that's the skill that gets us to where we're going. But then when we get there, we lose it, you know? And so I have found uh, consistently, and you are, it does not surprise me at all, Ashley, but that the ones and the leaders who are the strongest strongest in the space really are intentional about how they listen. So that's, that's just so awesome. I've su- enjoyed this conversation so much. I don't want it to end, but we are uh, coming uh, up in time. If people want to get in touch with you or, or they want to follow you and, and hear about all the other amazing awards you're going to win because of, of the work that you're doing, what, what's the best way for them to stay connected? Yeah, so I am a massive uh, fan of LinkedIn. I consider myself a passionate networker. So if you are on LinkedIn, absolutely, you know, follow me, connect with me there. Um, I also love a good, love a good Twitter (laughs) action every now and again. So um, always posting and, you know, reposting lots of different initiatives and, and folks that I really love to amplify on that space also. So follow me there, Ashley Ladd 24. Um, and I am just so grateful, Deanna, for you to have had me on today and to have the conversation with you. Uh, I hopefully we can do it again soon and talk all things HubSpot. <laughs> oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. If you don't know HubSpot already, make sure that you check them out. It's a really just an awesome platform. And I'm even more excited to be a customer, actually knowing that you are leading all of this fantastic work. So thank you so much. Uh, for those of you who are listening, thanks so much for joining us. We here at Uplifting Impact Believe, the more people we have who are having this conversation, who are pushing themselves, who are really trying to pull these concepts into their leadership, the more impact we can have in the world. Don't we want the world to be more inclusive? How amazing would that be? So we're so grateful for you tuning in today. We're so grateful for Ashley and for her time. We hope that you will be tuning in and and also telling all of your friends about the podcast because we want the more, more, more people. uh, So we have more people who are out there advocating and doing this, this good work. So thank you so much for your time and we'll, we'll be in touch soon. 